Welcome to the Kingdom Marriage Show with Hassani and Danielle Pettiford. I am so excited to be launching this new show, this new podcast here with my husband, Hassani. Um, I'm excited because we're going to be talking about a, a topic that I think has been really meaningful for you and I, especially because we have lived our life by this. And this idea of kingdom marriage that is circulating. As a matter of fact, when you think about it, you hear a lot of kingdom kingdom conversation going yeah. on kingdom marriage kingdom life kingdom entrepreneur kingdom 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 but do we actually know what that actually means that's what it is and i myself i'm gonna speak for me have always wondered like when it comes to couples out here who are married six months and then you have to compare that to a couple that's married for 50 years right what is the difference what is the secret sauce what is it that gets a couple through all the muck and mire all the ups and downs all the issues and the trauma and the drama because trust and believe if you've been married for years you've been through some drama okay it was interesting because today i took my daughter to the doctor and um she was dealing with her ears nose and throat and the doctor he had to have been like, like maybe 70 years old he was an old guy so he was real talkative and he was asking me what i did and i told him that we work with couples who are going through crisis and he said wow this is such meaningful work and i said how long you been married he said 40 years i said wow congratulations and then he starts talking to me about friends of his that have been married for 30 years and they just got a divorce and how devastated mm. he was and I said what what got you there and he was like you know what we went to counseling he said lots of people have a problem with counseling but counseling saved our lives and I said wow that's so interesting and he's he was just actually thanking me about the powerful work but he went on to talk about but we've been through some things I mean we have worked through some challenges and so sometimes it's really about getting an understanding about certain principles that are the guiding light for some couples that make it because God had a plan when he instituted marriage didn't absolutely he? He, he definitely had a plan and I think that story is a powerful one because a lot of times people think man uh, we went through crisis maybe this wasn't the right decision maybe yes. I chose the wrong person but the question is not what do you do if her happens in your marriage. The question is, what do you do when hurt happens in your marriage? Because we're all going to be hurt. We're all going to do things that offend. We're all going to go through crises and challenges and setbacks. But but what causes some couples to overcome and other couples to fold? Well, that's what we're going to be talking about uh, during the Kingdom Marriage Show. There's going to be so many topics that we're going to kind of peel back and really give you insight on how to thrive in your life, in your marriage, in your family, in every aspect of your being. So before we even dive in how about we just close our eyes in a word of prayer now we believe in touching and agreeing so if you're sitting down with your spouse we want you to touch and agree because there's power the bible says whenever two or more come together in his name there he is in the midst so father god we thank you right now for who you are and for the opportunity that we have to come together and to share the power of your word with hundreds and thousands of couples all over the world father it was an institution marriage that is that was created by you and when we take you out of that institution that's when things begin to crumble but as long as we honor you and keep you in the fold then we know that success is guaranteed and Lord, we also know that there's an enemy out there that is there to kill, steal, and destroy. And we just pray a hedge of protection around every couple that is tuned into this podcast, that you would protect them, that you would keep interruptions from them, Lord, that we know that as soon as we get dialed into you, the phone starts ringing, the kids start crying and everything. We just pray that there would, that you would eliminate distractions for these couples. We ask you, Father God, for protection for them and their family, and that they would glean some powerful nuggets from this podcast that they can take into their marriage to honor and please you in jesus name we pray amen amen so danielle you know when we're talking about marriage we know that upwards of 50 percent of all couples end in divorce so there is the traditional marriage that society honors but then there's a kingdom marriage and i think it's important to understand the difference between the two so when we talk about kingdom we're talking about a government we're talking about a rule and in this form of government there's a king and the king influences is the people of this particular kingdom or nation with uh, his, you know, culture, with his belief system, with his behavior.
behaviors and practices and all of the members or citizens of that particular uh, society have to operate according to the rule of the king and so we kind of understand that uh, in the natural realm now here in America we don't have a king we no. have a president right we have a president and I love that because <clears throat> when you think about the United Kingdom and they have their queen right we think that's so spectacular too by the way Americans are like oh you have a queen we don't have that kind of a, a monarchy or anything like that but we have our presidents you know and there are different other leaders and governors mm -hmm. that run other countries in different ways right and so sometimes you'll find that people completely disagree with the rulership and the government that they're in, that they were birthed into. They disagree. Mm -hmm. And you call those people expats. It happens all the time. People don't, I mean, the most um, most expatriates are coming to America, yeah. <laughs> right? But sometimes Americans will expatriate Ab themselves absolutely. to other countries and they'll say things. I don't like the president. I don't like the laws. I don't like the regulations. I don't like what they're doing around homeless people in America. All the things that they don't like mm -hmm. is the reason why they expatriate. Well, we, unknown, unbeknownst to us, have been indoctrinated into societal norms. And so for that reason, it's almost like we're operating as expatriates ourselves when we should be ambassadors. We should be ambassadors for yes. the kingdom of God, not expatriates of his kingdom. You know, the scriptures talk about how we're aliens, like we're not from here. <laughs> We're not supposed to look like folks from here. We're not supposed to be like people from here. We're supposed to be strange and unfamiliar. There's supposed to be something about us that stands out. But unfortunately, because we haven't understood God's kingdom and what that means to bring his kingdom from heaven down here, the way ambassador from another country brings his culture, his laws, his rules, wherever he goes, then we're lost and we're living as expatriates of the kingdom of God that we claim to be a part of. Now, when you say ambassador, that's really, you know, it brings me back to when we traveled to, say, South Africa. And I remember we were traveling the country and right across the street was the U.S. Embassy. And it was closed at the time. We couldn't get in. But just think about the fact that across the street from us was the U.S., Oh, but I thought the U.S. was thousands of miles and thousands of hours away. Technically, yes. But wherever the embassy is, it represents a particular nation. So once you cross that gate and step into that territory, territory jurisdiction you're technically in the united states of america and so that concept, legally in legally, the united me, many people that are escaping like terrorists and crazy things happening in a, in a country are trying to get to the u.s yes. embassy for safety because once you get into the embassy all the rules change that's right and if you attempt to attack the embassy you're attacking the nation that the embassy represents so Ooh. so as believers as ambassadors of god's kingdom our domain in essence should be an embassy and and the same culture that exists in heaven the same culture that exists in the kingdom of God is the culture that should be evident and president uh, present in our jurisdiction our domain in our homes. and that means everywhere you go right it's, it's our homes and it's everywhere that you step foot you represent the kingdom or an ambassador and you're well you're supposed to be an ambassador and that means that the embassy is the domain yes. that you're taking up so that's a little bit about what we want to jump into during this session is we want to talk about what does it mean what does kingdom marriage actually mean Asan? so so once again as a recap a kingdom has a king it has a rule or government and it has the citizens who are part of that so we know that jesus is the king of the kingdom there's a rule and a government and a culture that he wants us to live by and we are citizens of that kingdom so let's tell you what a kingdom marriage actually looks like here's a powerful definition it says a kingdom marriage is defined as a covenantal union between a man and a woman who commit themselves to function in unison under divine authority in order to replicate God's image and expand his rule in the world through both their individual and joint callings. What a comprehensive definition. Like there's so many components and parts of that. It sounds like something that I definitely want to be a part of. Now, when we gave our vows to one another, 
and we said I do, we probably didn't know the depth of what we were stepping into, but it was through our relationship with God and our study that, you know, God began to, uh, you know, unpack and reveal the true purpose of our union. We were just focusing on the pleasures of it, right? But there's purpose for this union. And when you understand the purpose for it, what you can do in your relationship is just unfathomable. So let me get straight. What you're saying to me is that kingdom, kingdom marriage means that I am representing God's morality, not my own? Pretty much. So his intentions, his plans, his vision, not my own? Pretty much. Through the gifts that he has instilled in you and me? Absolutely. And collectively? Pretty, yeah. So, so that means that I don't get to go out here and just r make my own rules and call it kingdom marriage. Mm. Right? I can redefine things. I could call a spade something else. Mm. I could call this that. Mm. But what God is talking about yeah. when he says a kingdom marriage, yeah. he's talking about marriage that abides by his laws. Is that what I'm understanding? Yes. And, I, and I'm glad you brought that up because there's many people who profess Christ. There's many people who will call themselves Christians and even go to church, but they haven't submitted their lives to to the Lordship of Jesus Christ and the principles found in the word. And so we often talk about embracing the fullness of God and the fullness of God is comprised of the spirit of God and the system that he put in place, the seeking his presence, but also applying his principles. And when you do that, yes, you can't do what you want to do. You can't make your own rules. You can't use your own path. I mean, technically you can, but it won't work out for you. But when you do things according to how he established it, since he created this institution called marriage, then you are guaranteed to be successful mm. it doesn't mean you're going to be perfect Let's, it doesn't I was about mean to go you're going to have challenges and crises and situations things will occur because we still are in this flesh and we still have struggles but if you hold on to the power of god's word you can overcome the bible says that we're more than conquerors and we can overcome even through our faith i think about you know the judicial system right how we if we have a dispute with our neighbor say i loan my neighbor some money and they don't want to pay me back i can take them to small claims court mm -hmm. right because there's my side of the story and then there's your side of the story right one person is saying hey you gave me that money i'm saying no i loaned you that money end of the story we're going to small claims court so that the judge can make the final decision and when it comes to kingdom marriage that is one of the ingredients mm -hmm. in the secret sauce is that you no longer are submitting to your own will design yes. desires plans ideals creations whatever you come up with now we go to the king who created the laws already we go to the king together when we have disputes when we're not on the same page and so it takes away a a lot of this struggle that I have in relationships where you have to submit to one another and instead together you're submitting to the king and that's the power of it that's the power of kingdom marriage and when we talk about a couple that's been together for 50 years and you know they've been through all the highs and all the lows they've seen death they've seen disease they've seen sickness they've over they've overcome a lot financial everything they've encountered but they're still standing because they learned how to go to the king. Mm. So I'm excited, Danielle, that we're going to take our time with this. Like if we go back to that definition, it was so packed. It was literally seven components of it. And it's too much to cover in this one episode. So I, I want to share with you what you can expect over the next few episodes at Unpack Kingdom Marriage. Number one, if we go back to the definition, it says that it is a covenantal union, not a contract. You were just talking about contracts. What is the difference between a contract and a covenant? Oh, I wait to get into that. Okay, that. Then it says a kingdom marriage is a marriage between a man and a woman. Now we're talking about a different culture yeah. and we know that around the world, the societal norms have right. changed. Well, let me just speak to that a little bit because we are talking about kingdom marriage, right? So this is how this means that we're abiding by what the word of God says. That is the law. That's one thing I want to say. But when you say culture, right, there are so many different cultures out here now. Yeah. I mean, you've got everything from, you know, polygamy to thruples and triples and quadruples and everything in between, right? These are different cultures. So what we are here to talk about is kingdom, kingdom culture, culture, kingdom marriage. Kingdom marriage. It is a very specific yeah. thing and it needs to be talked about. Absolutely. Uh, 
third, uh, a kingdom marriage, it says that it functions in unit in unison. So in essence, the power of unity, the power of agreement, because, you know, agreement is a law. And when you operate according to the law, oh my God, what you can accomplish as a couple is incredible. So I can't wait to dive into that. The next component of being a part of a kingdom marriage is that you submit under a divine authority. authority. You See, are not the authority, you're my not friend. Your own head, you're not you your are own not. God. You can't make your own decisions, not if you're submitted to the king. And it means that it's, it protects you. Oh, we're we'll we going to get into we'll that. It. Then the next component, it says that when a man and a woman come together in a kingdom marriage, they replicate the image, image of, of God, God on the earth. the earth. Which is, listen, I don't even know if people understand what that actually means. But when I we, feel like that's the biggest component oh right there, representing the image of God on the earth. And when people get a hold of that in and of itself, what that means, and then the duplication of that in children, and then the legacy that's involved, wow. Absolutely. Now, the next component is that a man and a woman in a kingdom marriage, they are purposed to expand the rule of the kingdom. Now, we're here to advance the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God has a rule. So when we come together, we're expanding his rule, not ours, his, his rule rules. in the earth realm. And the final component is, it is done through our individual and collective calling. Now, what I like about that, Danielle, is that, listen, I don't lose my individuality. I don't lose myself expression i don't lose my uniqueness because we got married i have my own identity but we also have a collective identity which means you have a purpose i have a purpose and we have a purpose together I mean, it's beautiful. And I think that understanding this, because a lot of what this represents, people struggle with in their marriage. You know, they feel like they're losing themselves. They feel like they have to submit to one or the other, and there's that battle. There's so many issues in there that get resolved through understanding what kingdom marriage is. And so, listen, guys, if you are excited about hearing more about what kingdom marriage is and how you can apply it in your life, tune in to us every week. We are not going to stop until we get this stuff all the way to the four corners corners of the earth yes. make sure that you like share and subscribe and listen ask questions this is the time to get your questions asked because Hassani and I we had to ask questions we were wondering like what is it what is it about marriage how do you make this thing work where's the power we done figured out where the power is okay so ask your questions bring in all the hard questions come to the session with your pencil and your pen and we're gonna go in take care